Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy 10th anniversary to us. We've got a big promo going on, so appreciate everybody jumping in on all the 2024 Bowman baseball breaks. 10 years, here's to another 10. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. A little good late night rally here. This is our last break of the night on a Wednesday. Pick your team five. Thanks everybody. We got Zach, we got Lassavon Mojo and a Jaspi hat. Oliver got a hat too. We had two teams remaining. Time was running out. And I said, hey, last two teams taken. We'll throw in a hat. And the people responded. Thank you. Keep your eye out for more of those, these, uh, these hat giveaways. Pretty sharp, I think. You know, updated logo on here. I don't know if this is going to be a permanent logo change or if this is just going to be a uh, a tenth anniversary logo. That way we can see who was around. Maybe that's how we can tell who was around for the tenth anniversary. All right, here we go. So as many of you know by now, the, the key rookies that we're sleeving and top loading, like their paper and their chrome cards, are gonna be Aiden Miller for the Phillies, Arjun Numala for, uh, Numala for the Blue Jays, Brock Wilkin, Brewers, Dylan Cruz, obviously, for Washington, uh, Ellie Dela Cruz, he's one of the two rookies we're sleeving and top loading, and um, Greg Lombard Jr., Yankees, Kyle Teal, Boston Red Sox, Luis Baez, Houston Astros, Walker Jenkins, Minnesota Twins, the other rookie that we're sleeving top loading, uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto for my Dodgers, and then Yohandi Morales, another national. So nationals get two rookies that, uh, two prospects that get the immediate sleeve and top load treatment. I'm just gonna sleeve them, Mark. Sorting team will top load them just to save a little bit of time. It's a great for a Jaspi Audi. This is great for a, this is like a, we're, we're kind of calling it a summer hat. It's our part of our summer collection. This logo, it's kind of, it's nice for, nice for being on a yacht. You know, breaking on a boat, boat breaks. Uh, I've got really no live sports on right now. I've got college golf on the background and on the background. They are at uh, TBC Sawgrass and it's just kind of weird watching. They're, they're hitting to the island green right here and there's nobody there. <laughs> and so it's weird not seeing all the build out. Oh, it's in the water. Sorry. This chick put it in the water. But it's weird not seeing like a whole bunch of people crowding around there, so it looks really empty actually. I guess that's how the members play it. All right, there's Jerron Elkins, 25 out of 99 for my Dodgers. Uh, there's Walker Jenkins. I'll set those over there. Rising Inferno. There's Yoshinobu. And Ellie De La Cruz is often right next to him. And our first of three autos in this box, Chandler Pollard. Rangers, Ben Smith with Texas. Oh, there's a good chance I might miss some of these key players, but if that happens, don't worry. Our uh, sorting and shipping team will definitely catch these in the sorting process. They have they have the same list as we do. Keep them 
monster box here and here. We got Ethan Salas, blue paper, 60 out of 150. Yes? Is that Teddy calling for me? Nick T. Padres. <laughs> yes. Kyle Teal. That's Teddy, folks. He's here all week. Tip, tip, your, tip your bartenders. Try the meatloaf. It's great. There's Arjun Nimala, the uh, Indian American kid from Florida. I think, is he the first Indian kid to be drafted in the first round, I think? Or maybe ever? I can't imagine ever. It's got to be just first round, right? There's uh, Capri Ortiz, 85 out of 150, Blue Lunar. Nick Stover with the Halos. There's Lombard Jr. Prospect Power Up. Brock Wilkin, paper for the Brew Crew. So the Brewers, Kyle, with the Brew Crew, you'll get all of those. The Lombards will go to Tristan. The Arjuns will go to Tristan. Jesus Rodriguez is going to go to Tristan and the Bronx Bombers. So there's our third auto there. Aiden Miller will go to the Phillies. And that's going to be for EA and the fight and fills. This is a parallel. This is nice. <laughs> yeah. We have the meats. Maybe not. I feel like it would it would say that if that was the case on the back of the baseball card, but. Thought I read that somewhere. Dylan Cruz, all of these will go to David, who got the Nationals. We haven't seen an auto of him yet. At least I haven't. You have neither, Teddy, so, so maybe he's hard to hit, but let's try to let's try to get one here. 209 out of 250, purple paper, Jordan Lawler, Eric, and the Diamondbacks. That's right, Those in, the, a few Indian cricket players did get... Well, there's Walker Jenkins for the Twins for Brian Heyman. Did get drafted, so it must be the first player of Indian descent. His parents are from India. He's American, but who uh, got drafted in the first round. Which is kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, like his own like signature. Maybe he has like, a favorite... Uh, favorite dish is mom cooks or something like that, and they'll sell it at the ballpark. You know, that would be pretty delicious. I don't know what the the Indian population is in Toronto. We should look up a census report or something like that. There's Lombard Junior paper. Kyle Teal for Boston, that's going to go to Todd. And when's Jake Burger going to, is going to get his own burger? Do you think he has a signature burger at the stadium? Although I made that comment a while ago, and then when he was still on the White Sox, and someone in the chat piped up and was like, he's not good enough to get his own signature burger. I was like, ouch, it's probably true. There's Josh Rivera to 199. I, I don't think he's even getting bobbleheads, right? I think he's getting some regular playing time with Miami now. There's Yoshinobu. There's Ellie. Wild to see how this is all playing out. 
from the bunker. Can I get oh, That is so good. You just have to dump that out of the that moves to the right. All right, and I'll do a recap at the end. I'm trying to think, has there been any... Has there been any... Uh, there has to be, right? Asian American players that have been drafted in the first round? Well, the, I think that one Brewers kid was like half Japanese. I think he was from like Valencia, California or something like that. Maybe that guy? Russell? Really? Is he first rounder? Ah, Rex is back. What do we, what do we got? What do you got for us, Rex? This is a long break. I could use some trivia. Yeah, what, uh, Yelich is half, a quarter, some, something? I think I heard that somewhere. What man put on regular clothes and a fake mustache return? Uh, yeah, that's definitely Bobby Valentine. That's classic. Come on, Rex. Cruz paper. There's Brock for the brew crew, Kyle. Is anyone excited about the Olympics this year? I, f I usually am not excited about the Olympics. Um, but I always feel like the week of, I'll kind of get into it. There's Luis Baez. All of these will go to Aaron and the Astros. Yeah, I mean, we got to have, I mean, you got to get, Rex, if you want to be trivia master here at Jaspies, at Olympic basketball, that's going to be fun. You're going to have to... Give us like a chance. Sometimes you're you're giving us like you're like what's the last what's the last digit of Emmanuel Tejada's birth date? And we're like, well, how are we supposed to know that? All right, there's JD Gonzalez to two ninety nine for the Friars. That'll be for Nick T. Can't be like who was like the you know who's who's eleventh on the on the all-time OPS list or something. That's the Cesar Quintas, 99 out of 100. That's our first of the three autos here in this box. It's going to be for Charles and the Giants. Aiden Smith. Doris Lombard Jr. There we go. Yeah, I'll take some uh, WNBA trivia. It's a Candace Parker, I think, who just recently retired and then got a job with Adidas. President at Adidas or something like that, which is a pretty nice... President of uh, Adidas Women's Basketball. She'll have a say in product development. What year and what baseball team wore the first team were the first team uniforms? 
And it's no longer a baseball team. It's currently a NBA team? What? What's a current NBA team that used to be a baseball team? And they were the team that first had uniforms. Hmm. What? <laughs> Andrew has Teddy trivia for us. What game show was Teddy on in Nickelodeon? Um, it was the Temple Run. Run the Run through the the Temple show. No, I know that was a cool show. It was not the Temple show. Uh, for Rex's trivia question, I say it's uh oh the name. The name share is the name of a. You okay, Teddy? Oh, yeah. I need to hear you say words. Are you okay? Teddy's not giving me a verbal response. Teddy, are you okay? That means he's dying. Teddy. Okay, okay. That means a really strong two-part part. Teddy's okay, ladies and gentlemen. He gave me he gave me words. The windpipe is clear. Do not need to worry about him, although he's still said a Frito went the wrong way. The, so the name of the old baseball team shares a name with a current basketball team. I say it was. Ooh, look at that, Paul Skeens. 62 out of 150. And that is for Eugene and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Nice. Perfect time to pull him. Yep, he's from Fullerton. He's from Southern California. But that Fullerton's about what? 40, 30, 40 minutes south of us here. Got called up. Everyone knows this. Everyone's heard, I'm sure. If you're a baseball fan, fan you've heard. He'll make his first start Saturday against a team I don't know who the Pirates are playing on Saturday. but Nice. Yeah, about 45 minutes. There you go. Yeah, well, T Teddy, Teddy was coughing and choking. Was not responding to my comment, so I had to run over there, but he then responded in the affirmative, so we're okay. 172 out of 150, Wyatt Langford. Oh, they're playing the Cubs. All right, so that'll, that'll be a fun matchup. I have MLB TV, so I should be able to watch it if it's not on national television. Uh, that's going to go to Ben Smith and the Rangers. Another Dylan Cruz for David. Dylan Cruz for David. Nice. Second son's going to, going to Cal State Fullerton. Should be good, good baseball. Baseball games there. Uh, Rex, the answer to your trivia question, I'm going to say the Kings. Good actor, huh? That's what she did. I didn't think he was actually choking. I played it up for dramatic effect, and it and it worked, Rex. This is the kind of emotions that Jaspies brings you. You know, laugh, you can cry, get get that heart rate up. We can, make, we can help you relax. There's Chase Davis, three ninety nine, and Wyatt Langford, Rangers. It's going to be Ben Smith. Uh, Nick had a, uh, oh, also, Andrew, I don't know who the, Teddy, what was that game show that you were on when you were a kid? There's our third autograph. That's a nice box. Teddy's in the back corners of the shop here. Chase Davis to 399. Green paper for the Cardinals, Tristan. It's 
Kyle Teal for the Red Sox. That's for Todd. It was in 1849, and the name was long, but is now short. Oh, the Knicks. It was the, uh, the 1849 New York Knickerbockers were the first team to wear uniforms. And now they're the Knicks. And now that team is no longer the case. Nick was at Nick Stover was asking, who's the GOAT? Well, I think the answer is Michael Jordan, but I would, I would, if as a Lakers fan, I would say, uh, oh, I do remember those days, Rex. I do remember those days. Sitting out in the, in the hot sun, in a wide open field, on the outskirts of what is now known as Brooklyn. Past that were some wide open fields where people would go and would play the old game of bases balls. Ball bases is what we called it. Ball and stick, we would call it. Where we threw, uh, where we threw underhand. Oh, those are the, those those are the days. Everything was in black and white back then. You know, eighteen forty nine, a glorious time. You know, a peaceful time. All right, next box. There's a Lombard Jr. insert. Yeah, Rex was at Rex was at Kroger at the time, 1849. Behind Riley Green is Luis Matos, 413 out of 499. It's going to go to Charles and the Giants. Here in Pick Your Team 5, Box 3, Kyle Teal, DC. Dylan Cruz. Dylan Cruz playing in DC. DC and DC. They're going to lean into that at some point. What player was the only one who hit a walk off inside the park grand slam? I feel like this is something that would happen in 1849. There's Max uh, Wagner. 62 out of 199. That's for the O's. That's going to go to Nick Stober. Second round pick here. It was old Willie High Pockets Key. Key? Keel? Old High Pockets. Ellie Della Cruz. Luis Baez. Lombard Jr. Spencer Nivens to 499 reveals an Anthony Huzo. Huezo? Huzo? 
Going to Aaron. And the Astros. It happened in 1956. That would be... It would obviously be... Uh... uh Paul, oh, I was going to say a pirate, Paul Wayner. Yeah, it's what he Old used. pirate Paul Wayner. For Dylan Cruz. Well Old well pirate Paul Wayner. There's an Arjun for Toronto. Another Arjun Chrome this time for Toronto. Walker Jenkins for Minnesota. Luis Baez. Walker Jenkins. Chrome. Not win. Not winner. Okay. Uh, Bill Mazeroski. Bill Mazeroski. Also hit a walk-off homer in the World Series, Game 7. Clemente did? Roberto Clemente? There's Jacob Burke, 226 out of 250. Purple uh, Ray Wave. For the White Sox, Jason, Jason Wainer, speaking of Wainers, maybe related to uh, old Paul Wainer, old pirate. There's Rolfie Cruz, 19 out of 299, mini diamonds autograph for Nick Stober and the O's. Aiden Miller for the Phillies. It was Clemente. Nice. Wow. A walk off inside the park. Where? Do you have any more information on this game? Where was this game? Yondi Morales for David and the Nats. Could have been in one of those old, uh, the old Pirate Stadium. What was it called? It could have been a bandbox with a weird, a weird rectangular shape. And if you hit it to the right corner, way back there, yeah, you got a shot at it. Someone's fumbling the ball a little bit. All right. Box four. What leadoff hitter of the 80s and 90s broke up 81... He broke up 81 no hitters with a home run. It was Forbes Field. That's what it was. Clemente erased a 3 1 ninth inning deficit and base clearing into the fourth one. The leadoff hitter, that's got to be Ricky Henderson. He broke up 81 no hitters with one home run. I don't know how that's possible, but it's Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson, the no-hitter killer. Ricky hates no-hitters, is what Ricky Henderson said in the interview. But you didn't mean 81 no-hitters, right? Or did you? Wait a second. What does that even mean? <laughs> I mean, 
You'd be you'd be breaking up a no hitter if you're if you're first to the plate, if you're a leadoff hitter and you lead off with a home run. You're breaking up no hitters, I guess, right? So I suppose I suppose that works. Yeah, lead off home runs. All right, yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a that's a uh, that's a crafty way to craft that question, because then I realize, wait a second, he's leading off games, so he's technically breaking up no hitters. That's sneaky. That's that's a snake question. Snake question, bro. Wait, what's the quote with with Ricky and John three sixteen? There's Max Wagner. Not minimum Wagners, not medium Wagners. We want Max Wagners. That's going to be for Nick and the Orioles. You're considered a leadoff hitter every at bat. Not, uh, I mean, the first batter of every inning, I guess, could be, could be a leadoff hitter leading off an inning. There's Max Clark. More Maxes. Must have been a popular year for Max. Purple. Uh, purple Paisley going to Eugene. Oh, no, check that. Um, to Ryan and the Tigers. There's another Dylan Cruz Chrome. Aiden Miller, green paper, 73 out of 399. EA with the fills, nice. So Andrew's saying, legend has it one time someone quoted John 316 to Rick Henderson. <laughs> That's, I could totally hear Ricky Henderson saying that. I don't want to hear about John hitting 316 and <laughs> Ricky's hitting 330. Man, I, I love Rick Henderson. I'm mean, saying if you're the leadoff hitter during a game, you're still considered a leadoff. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Yeah. He's your he's your number one number one hitter or hitter in the one position, so you're always a leadoff hitter. I don't think anyone would really say that that he was a leadoff hitter at the beginning of an inning. I guess you would maybe. Here's Ricky Henderson, second up to bat with two outs. He's the leadoff hitter. And there's Isaiah Drake. No, I'm with Kendrick. That's going to go to Brian and the Braves. <laughs> Ricky's hitting 330. There is a famous Ricky Henderson story that was debunked, and I choose not to. Uh, I choose not to believe the debunked version of it. But uh, but apparently, as some of you may remember, John Olerud who I think after an early career incident, he started wearing a batting helmet in the field. You know, and Ricky's been on a number of teams. He ended up, he was with a team. And he ended up on team with, uh, with, uh, with John Allerud again. Maybe he was in Toronto or something like that. And Ricky, Hen Ricky Anderson goes, Ricky Anderson goes, uh, hey, I used to play with a guy that wore a batting helmet in the field. And John Allerud said, Ricky, that was me. Yeah, apparently that... Yeah, but apparently that story was debunked, though. No. Yeah, I think so, but I don't wanna, I'm not going to believe it. I think John Allard himself said he made it up or something like that. But I don't believe it. I choose not to believe it. Here's Ellie and Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Here's Cole Foster to 99. 
and Ronnie Maurizio. So if there was a no hitter into the seventh and he hits home run, then he would still be a leadoff hitter. Well, no. I mean, the definition is different. Yes, he is a leadoff hitter. But in, he, but in the game, he wouldn't be a leadoff hitter. You know what I mean? But he is the leadoff, the, he's the leadoff hitter, or was the leadoff hitter. <laughs> There's Namala, Namala again right there. But yeah, I I, th I think it's 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 a little bit of semantics, but but no announcer is gonna say that was a leadoff homer for Ricky Henderson, you know, in the seventh inning. That just just wouldn't make sense. There's Tr Tony Blanco to four ninety nine. Who do you who do you think can be considered the best leadoff hitter? I don't know, in the traditional sense? I mean, Ricky Henderson has got to be up there. You know, but there's many, many ways to, to skin the leadoff cat, if you will. You know, like, I think... You have the traditional leadoff hitter who is just kind of a slap hitter who will get on base and then steal second. That's the type of leadoff hitter. There's J.D. Gonzalez. I remember when... Who did the Orioles put at leadoff? Brady somebody? And then he ended up... He was a power hitter, though. He hit 50 home runs from the leadoff spot. Well, maybe not from the as a leadoff, but... But I think he... You know, so you can have power... In the in the leadoff position. Brady Anderson, that's right, Kevin. Thank you. That's exactly who it is. Love this name right here, Travis Honeyman, the Honeyman. Gets all the honeys, I guess. The Honeyman. Lombard Jr. All right, we're halfway through the case. In case you're wondering, each row in a monster box over here, uh, each row can fit two jumbo boxes once I pull the other cards for sleeving. For the autos, so FYI. Yeah, each row's got to be up there. That guy could spray it anywhere. Pete Rose. I mean, your your classic leadoff hitter's got to be an on base machine. Although there's an old story where. Who was the uh, Mariners manager when Ichiro first uh, when when Ichiro first came into the league? Anyway, it wasn't like the old days where you you have like YouTube videos to watch, or like today where you have YouTube videos to watch. You can see what you know Ichiro can do. I'm sure you know the team saw some tape stuff like that, but. But uh, one of the first times, like in the spring, during a batting session, there's Ichiro is in the cage doing Ichiro things. He'll spray, you know, he'll put five in left field. He'll put five in center field. He'll put five uh, in right field. He'll uh, pull some down the line. He'll go oppo, you know. He'll, 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 he was just putting, he was like a golfer. He, he was just taking every club out of the bag. And, and so the manager looked at... 
was watching Ichiro for a little bit and was just kind of came up to him and was just like, you know, is this all you, is this, you know, is this it? Is this it? You know, and, and Ichiro was like, oh, okay. And then took the next 10 pitches and took them yard. Pulled out the driver. Uh, yeah, so Ichiro is one of the, he could do, he can do anything with a, with a bat and a ball pitch to him. It's Cole Foster to 499. Cole Foster will go to the Giants. That'll be for Charles. Bonds used to lead off. Yeah, maybe at some point he did. And then you, I mean, that was there, there were some some mean lineups back in the those days. And we got nice. Arjun Namala, 138 out of 499 for Toronto. That's going to be for Tristan and the Blue Jays. Nice. There you go. Your 20th overall pick. Third best Blue Jay prospect in the pipeline. Nice one. And there's Tavian Josenberger. That's going to go to... All right, see you, Ted. It's going to go to Nick Stober and the Orioles. Got a paper, Dylan Cruz. And we got an Anthony Skull, 19 out of 50. That's going to be some gold for the Angels, Nick Stover. Got Brock for Milwaukee. And, nice, the, here is the anime card, and it's going to be Henry Davis. Pirates, Eugene Clip. Nice break for Eugene. You got the Skeens earlier. You got the Henry Davis. That's right, Andrew. It's old Lou Pinella. I think you're absolutely right on that, that Ichiro story. Yeah, and after, the, after, after he saw Ichiro do that, he said he never had to talk to him about hitting ever again. And he talked about other stuff, but about hitting. He knew that he could just pencil him at the top of the lineup every day and not have to worry about anything. <laughs> oh, and that's Lombard Jr., Rising Inferno. We'll put that in the sleeve and top load pile. I mean, if Ichiro played, came into the league, maybe, you know, 15, 20 years later than he, than he did. Like, imagine, imagine social media with the things that he was doing. It's a Lombard Jr. prospect power-up. There's a Kyle Teal. 
you know, we, we need Henry Davis to play to play a little bit better. I think he's been struggling a little bit. He's kind of weird. In recent years, some catchers were picked up, were picked high atop the, uh, the draft, Henry Davis and Joey Bart. And I think they're both on the same team now. I think Joey Bart was released by the Giants and he ended up with the Pirates and both have had their struggles. Rushman's been fine, though. And there's a Yohandi Morales. 85 out of 100. Mini diamond autograph for David and the Nats. Maybe we'll find his future teammate in here somewhere. They might be current teammates, but I don't know what level he's at. But Double A? Walker Jenkins, Twins. There's Arjun. Walker Jenkins, Chrome, and three boxes to go. We're getting there. Almost there. College golf on in the background. I'm sure. Is everyone excited about the Myrtle Beach Classic that's starting tomorrow? Golf. Dra definitely dragging a little bit here at the end of my shift. We're about 47 minutes in on this break, and we still have three boxes to go. Uh, what time do we usually start? Uh, we usually start at three o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Eastern. Oh, and uh, sorry, Andrew, I missed your question earlier about what, what are we having for our late night eats? I don't know. I, we, got, we got fed today. Uh, we, got, we got Jersey Mike's. I think we, we had sandwiches and snacks and all sorts of stuff. I don't know. I don't know what Teddy, Teddy is getting. I should have asked him before he left. Yeah, so uh, we stream from around 3 o'clock Pacific to around now. Today was a special uh, special day for us, so we, we, we've been streaming, what does the clock say? 16 hours and 46 minutes on our streaming software. Big new release day, celebrating our 10th anniversary. Surprise! It's been ten years. Time flies by when you're having fun, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't feel like ten years. Doing cruise paper. We got John Cruise, three seventy-six out of three ninety-nine. Whoa, Andrew just moved to the Myrtle Beach area. Everyone's hyped about the tournament. The tournament's always great for the, for the local communities. I don't know how exciting. Oh, actually, is it a full field event? I think it might be. It might be, it might be fun to watch on TV. No, maybe not a full field event. 
as, uh, as Eric Van Ruyen is your favorite, odds-on favorite. But these are sometimes the fun ones to bet. There you go. Is that Alex Smalley, I think? Or H Hadley with the dub. Uh, never been to Myrtle Beach. Definitely want to. Is it nice, Andrew? Nice, nice neck of the woods there? A lot of golf. I'm, I'm, I'm attempting to, to be a golfer. And once I get decent enough, I would feel like that would be a fun place to go. 200 out of 250, Jose Ramirez. Cleveland, this is for you, Brian, with that one. And there's uh, uh, Johanfran Garcia. That's going to be for Todd and the Red Sox. At TPC Sawgrass, when we come back, we'll have the trophy ceremonies, the hardware being handed out. Don't go anywhere. Doug Smith has a lot of work left ahead of him. Forget what you know about speed. We did. And, uh, not that... Not that a zillion people are watching pro golf, but they, they got to figure out what they're going to do with, with golf. It's been a bit of a mess. I thought they would have this figured out by now, the PGA Tour and what they're going to do with the public investment fund. And ultimately with Live Golf, I guess. Ooh, what's, what do we got here? There's Mike Bove and there's Roger Garius. Nice, your Bowman Top 100 autograph. Yankees. It's for Tristan. Nice one for the Yankees. Tristan and the Bronx Bombers. Mike Bove will go to the Brew Crew. That will be for Kyle Muller. It's golf and retirement communities. Moved to Teddy's family, new town. Oh, just north of Myrtle, ironically. Super nice. Just a humid, hotter, hotter than San Diego and LA. Yeah, the humidity, I think. That's that's the thing that gets me. Oh, nice. Prospect 69. I like it. Um, yeah. My grandparents used to be in North Carolina. And I, I just remember visiting some summers, and man, the humidity it's, uh, it gets you. There's Aiden Miller. I remember being, uh, I think Nick and I went to, Nick Jaspi and I went to a, uh, a TriStar show in Houston in the middle of the summer. Here's Cesar Quintas for Charles and the Giants. Man, I guess in my head, Houston was not as close to, wasn't as close to, I didn't realize how close it was to the Gulf. I thought it was a lot further away. I knew it was down there, but. But everyone's like, no, like Galveston's like 30 minute drive right down the freeway. I was like, right, it's pretty close. So I was like, why is it so hot and humid? Remember, we were at the hotel, and there was like an there was like an outdoor bar, and like you know, I had a bottle of beer, and the outside of it was just sweating. It was just like it had condensation all over it. I couldn't believe it. Um, I was in an air conditioned cab or a Uber, Lyft or whatever, and we went to the hotel. And as soon as I opened the door, my glasses fogged up from the AC and then going into that humid climate just in between there and the, the doors to the hotel. It's wild. 
I don't know if I'm a humidity guy. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm out on humidity. Here's Bryce Matthews to 299. Now my parents recently retired to. They moved from Southern California to Vegas. And the dry heat, I feel like I'm okay with. I can kind of handle that. I mean, still sucks, but but I've been in both situations. That's right. Yeah, you're from San Diego. It's like you got the beach. You got you got the beach vibes. You got kind of beach weather that you're used to, but then then you've got that humidity. Yeah, I went to uh, went to college in San Diego. Went to UC San Diego, and I was just there visiting some friends a couple weekends ago. Real nice. Friend who lives in uh, Little Italy, and uh, so which is a nice part of town. Good food, great weather. Saw a Padres game at Petco. It's a pretty nice stadium. That's good. Yeah, I like the, the low key angle sounds nice. No beach bros, right? Second to last box. All right, yeah. If Teddy, if Teddy uh, ends up visiting out there, guys can hang out, get together. What are the odds, right? Although they're on the East Coast, you think they would just go down to Florida? <laughs> And we got another Yohandi Morales autograph. 438 out of 499. David with the Nationals. Second round pick. Wilkin. There's Carson Rucker, 52 out of 175. That's for Detroit. It's going to go to Ryan Redmond. And the autograph is for the Brewers, Filippo Dituri. That's going to go to Kyle and the Brew Crew. Who's got, I feel like they've got a pretty decent prospect pipeline laid down. Possibly piping in major leaguers, possibly. Arjun. Walter. Our secure place of the day presented by ADT in the women's individual stroke play. Gina Shu at the 15th for par. Clutch right in the heart. That was a thing. Aiden. At 
the 16th, the par 5, Dilly Sindel plus pressure on the ball. We got uh, Tayshawn Walton, uh, 176 out of 299. Speckle on this one. Walter Jenkins. Oh, sound like nice contact. But, oh, hit the green in the water. Lombard Jr. It's college golfing on the background. Uh, I hear that uh, that if you, I mean if you have young children, you know elementary school age children, apparently golf scholarships are out there. College is expensive these days, but. If your children have any aptitude or interest in golf and college, that might be a, that might be an angle. There's a Yoendri Vargas, Aqua, 85 out of 125. I think especially for if you have girls, you know, there'll be like these random colleges that need to fill out a, a golf team and you can get even like a partial scholarship or something like that to some random place. I think every other sport is pretty competitive. There's Anthony Huzo. It's Aaron of the Astros. I think this might be your second one. We'll do a recap. Obviously, the big programs are going to be competitive, right? like Stanford and USC and LSU and all those colleges, but. Outside of those major programs, they're still giving scholarships out. Uh, Augustin Ramirez, purple paper to 250. Yankees, that'll be for Tristan. Ellie. Aiden. All right, last box, finally, coming up. We'll do a recap. Hey, tomorrow, Thursday, that means travel day for baseball tomorrow so we're probably not going to see a lot of games we got we got diamondbacks at reds is the early game mariners at twins giants at rockies Astros at Yankees, Guardians at White Sox, Cardinals at Brewers, Royals at Angels. That's it. NBA playoffs, what do we got tomorrow? We only have one game tonight, but tomorrow, Cavs Celtics tomorrow. Game two, and then Mavs Thunder tomorrow, game two. Those are uh, ESPN games. Hockey. Uh, 
That's on TNT tomorrow. So that's what the TNT guys are doing tomorrow. But Rangers at Hurricanes. Rangers leading the series 2-0. And then uh, Avs at Stars. It's just game two. Esmil Valencia. It's going to be for Aaron and the Astros. There's a paper, Aiden Miller. We got Lazaro Montes to 250. Purple Ray Wave for Seattle. It's going to be for Oliver. Morales. Dylan Cruz Chrome. We got Alberto Rios, Magenta to 190. This always throws me off because I see the red and I'm just like, is that going to be an out of five? But no. But that'll go to uh, the Angels. That'll be for uh, Nick and the Halos. And there's another Anthony Huzo. Aaron and the Astros starting your Anthony Huzo PC. Lombard Jr. Brock. And the final half box. Looking for one more auto. We got Ellie De La Cruz, Jackson Holiday to 4.99, Dylan Cruz Rising Infernos. It's a good question. Kanoi, who was the big chase in 2014? Bowen Baseball. I don't remember off the top of my head. Who was on the box? Right. Oh, I kind of remember this now. This was the uh, Tyler Kolick and Nick Gordon were on the box. All right. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for hanging out, keeping me company here. Appreciate you. Talk to you tomorrow. Kyle Teal. Here's our final auto coming up. And it's going to be Robert Kalaz, 135 out of 299. Speckle autograph for the Rockies. That's going to be for Ben Smith. I feel like we're going to do a recap after this, but I feel like this is a pretty good box. Oh, you know, you know who was the chase in this? Carlos Rodon. I think Nick actually pulled a super fractor of Carlos Rodon. Pretty sure that was the big one. It's a 24 draft, 2014 draft class. Tyler Kolek was second over. Brady Aiken never, was the number one overall pick, never signed with the Astros. I don't know what happened to him. This ended up being a pretty decent class. Carlos Rodon uh, was three. Kyle Schorber was fourth. Nick Gordon, Aaron Nola was in this class.
Trey Turner's in this class. I don't know if he was a chase back then. Uh, Matt Chapman was in this class. Eric Fetty is in here too. These are all first rounders. But I think at the time, Carlos Rodon was the chase. Maybe some Nick Gordon, I think. Maybe some Shorber. I think Michael Conforto, I think, I remember being a popular one. But nowadays, maybe probably Aaron Nola, Trey Turner might be the might be the chase in here now. And then we got a yellow paper, Heston Kirkstad, twenty three out of seventy five. It's kind of funny to see like it's gonna be it's gonna happen to this set too. Like who we chase now and who we don't chase, you know, two, four, five, ten years from now. All right, we've pulled the, all the autos. We're looking for just maybe some other parallels that might be cool, but no, I think that is that, my friends. There's the three autos from this box. Here's the recap for 2024. Bowman Baseball, eight box, pick your team number five, Jumbo Edition. Thanks everybody for getting in on it, for being part of the action here. Some nice stuff here. The Andre Morales, the Henry Davis anime. I'm gonna take a picture of that Arjun. Paul Skeen's auto was nice. Let me start off with Chandler Pollard. There you go, gang. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with me. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.